Now, over the last couple of weeks, I've released a couple of videos that have picked up an awful lot of attention to do with WordPress, the UI, the UX, and so on of the admin dashboard. One of the things that I've said is I would love to see them pause development and focus on this to bring a more cohesive experience. Well, today we're going to take a look at an experimental feature that's available inside the Gutenberg plugin that kind of gives an insight into what we're probably going to expect. This is looking like it's going to be the future of at least the posts and pages section when it comes to the WordPress dashboard. What am I talking about? Let's go and take a look. So the first thing we're going to need to do is install the Gutenberg plugin. Now, why are we installing the plugin when we've got WordPress installed? Well, the Gutenberg plugin is kind of in advance of what you're going to see in WordPress itself with Gutenberg integrated into it. In there, it's not a separate plugin. It's all inside core. So once you install the Gutenberg plugin, we can then go and enable some experimental features that I think are worth taking a look at. Now, I've already installed this. And if we come into the Gutenberg entry, you'll see there's the option for experiments. If you want to test this out yourself, and you can test this out, there's nothing here that's not available to anybody else, please don't do this on a live site. These are experimental features, and in my very brief testing, they're already a little bit quirky and not the most stable. So you don't want to do this on a live site. Spin up a server, test it out on the playground for WordPress, whatever you want to do, but on a live site. Okay, so there's a bunch of experimental features in here, and you can, if you want to, have a play around with them. What I'm most interested in is this redesigned posts dashboard. Now, at the moment, it appears it's only on the posts, but I can imagine this is going to roll out to the pages. If you create custom post types and so on, it's all going to be very, very similar. So as long as you enable that and you hit Save Changes, you'll have access to this feature. The other thing you need to make sure you have is a block-based plugin, a full site editing plugin, like 2024. You can't use this with something like Bloxy and so on, which is more the sort of classic themes. That's not available to you. So once you've enabled this and saved it, what you're going to need to do is come over into the appearance section and into the editor, which switches you into the kind of Gutenberg template editor, where all your patterns, your navigation, all those kinds of things are. The kind of new experience of working with WordPress. So inside here, everything looks exactly the same as we've seen before. However, if we come into the Pages section, things are going to look a little different. You can see we now get this third intermediate panel that shows us, in this example, my four posts I've got created on this site. We then have the main section then showing us if we're editing something, that's going to be the post we're going to see, or probably in the future, Pages and so on. But what do we have here? Well, first of all, if we take a look at the left-hand side, we've got a breakdown of various different things. We can look and filter things down. All pages at the moment, this will show publish, schedules, drafts, everything. But if you want to see just, for example, your drafts, you can click. That will show you your drafts. You're scheduled, you're published, you get the idea. No rocket science there. Let's put it back to all pages. What I do like to see is that we've been down the bottom. That's pretty cool. And we've got these custom views. Now, these I'll come back to a little later because this is something that I really do like. Hopefully, this will stick around and be in the final version because I think this is super useful. Okay, so let's take a quick look. This middle section now is where we can see the lists of our posts. This kind of takes over from what we've historically seen that sort of simple sort of like table layout that we've kind of got used to. This allows us to do a couple of different things. First of all, we can get a brief overview. We can search. We can also come in and we can set things up for author and status so we can kind of filter things down based upon various different criteria. You can see, is the author, any of these, is none. So it allows us to filter things down. I would like to see more filters enabled inside here so we can expand this into more areas. I'm sure that we will have that at some point, or if we don't, I'm sure someone will have this as a plugin that'll add things on. Then we've got the option to open up the layout. Now we can switch from three different layouts, your table, your grid, and your list. Currently we're in list, which as you can see, is quite useful. If we go to table, this kind of looks like a refreshed version of what we've always seen, and we now lose that right-hand panel. If you like this view, you can see this is going to be very, very familiar. You've got all your basic info. We've got some editing options on the side, so we can edit, we can view this, and we can put it into the bin. And we can click the three little dots, and we've got even more options there, including our revisions and so on. So immediately, this looks a lot fresher, a lot more modern, and also gives us more information available in a much nicer interface. This is what I've wanted to see for an awful long time. Once you've seen that, you can see we can switch over to another view. So if we go back, go to our layout, for example, now switch it into grid view. This gives us a much bigger view where the featured image, providing you have one, is going to show up as the main kind of focus. Again, this is great, especially if you've got products in like WooCommerce. It'll be great to have this kind of view in WooCommerce. You know, you get the idea. So you can see it's some basic info. We've got the 
name of the post itself, the author, the published status, three little dots that open up the actions menu, which is basically what we saw in the list view. So nothing different inside there. And if you want to edit this, you can choose the edit option or you can simply click on it and it'll open up the editor. So this is a pretty standard experience. However, if we come back at this, and please do notice this new navigation hover effect that we get on the little WordPress icon. That's cool. At least there's some feedback there. Switching back to the list view takes us back to where we were before. We've got the three columns. Now you can see we can easily switch between any of these posts and we can start working on them, doing what we want. And once we click inside, you'll see that pushes out full screen and we can now start working. You also notice we've got a much more stripped back version of the actual Gutenberg editor itself. Your title, your featured image, your content. You can see all these options for the content. Come into your blocks. Select a block. Yeah, we're used to this kind of thing. Now, one thing that I think is a bit of a missed opportunity is I would love to see this left hand panel as an option we can pin to stay open. And hopefully this is something they want to actually introduce in the future. Why? Because let's just say we're working on our featured image loop and we want to copy the title. Well, how good would it be that we could keep this open, copy that text, switch to a different post, paste that text in? How much of a productivity boost would that be when you have similar posts and you want to grab, maybe you want to cite something from another post? You get the idea. That would be super cool. Hopefully they will introduce that. Sadly though, at the moment you click, it's going to open up in this view. Then you've got your options for your view options. In Inside Geo, we can sort these by title, author, and date in ascending or descending. We can choose the number of posts we want per page. And we can also choose what info we want. So at the moment, the author and the status and the date is actually hidden. Or we can show that field and we get a little bit more information now showing us the date. Again, it would be nice to have more options inside you. And if we start to add custom fields, I'd like to see the ability to enable and disable those custom fields. That would be super useful. But already, for me, this is a massive step forward in how things work. Now, coming over to these custom views. What we can do is we can create our own custom views. So these are two that I've created. If I click on test view, so this now switches over into a kind of grid view. You'll notice that the names here don't actually match up. This is one of those quirks I was saying about earlier on. I actually set the grid view to be this view and the test view was a different view, but it's flipped them around. So these are things that, like I say, this is why I don't suggest using this on a production site. But then we can switch to the grid view, switch back to the test view, adjust my sizing on you if I want to. You can see we can edit our items. You can do all those kinds of good things. We can open the quick sidebar or we can click to edit a post and you can see that'll take us over. So I don't really see the point in that quick sidebar because it immediately disappears. Kind of a weird experience there. Anyway, you get the idea. If you want to create a new view, you simply set up the options you want inside here, then click on new view, name it, click create and hope that it actually gives it the right name and the right settings. Anyway, you get the idea. I think this is a step in the right direction. This already feels, like I say, a lot fresher, a lot more modern. Even if you want to keep it to the table view like we're kind of used to, even this is more useful right now. So I'm, I'm kind of actually excited to see where this goes. And hopefully this will be rolled out relatively soon, especially if they just limit it to the posts and the pages. The functionality is almost there. I would love to see this roll out sooner rather than later. There are still limitations, like I say, you do have to be using a foresight editing theme at this point in time. So that is a little bit of a downer. Hopefully this will come over into the other side of things. But as you can see, they probably push in for the full site editing to give the best experience when it comes to WordPress. And maybe that kind of legacy dashboard with classic themes and so on, or using page builders and things like that. We have to put up with that kind of legacy version at this point in time. If that is the case, that's a bit of a downer and it's a shame. But if this is a vision of where things are going, it's a positive way and a positive step forward. But as always, please do give me your comments, your thoughts and your feedback in the comment section down below. Has this kind of opened your eyes to the direction that they could be going in? Is this giving you sort of like a little bit of hope that we're going to get something that gives us a more fresh dashboard, a little bit more usable dashboard? Let me have those comments. If you want to try this out for yourself, I'll put links and details in the description down below. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care. Thank you.